Time to shine today, podcast varsity squad. This is Scott Ferguson, and I got my laptop lifestyle traveler, my good buddy here, Ryan Bathy. Um, and he, I believe he just told me he's in Germany right now, kind of doing his thing. Just watched him on another podcast or kind of a stream that he's popped over. Luckily, I had he carved some time for you guys, the squad here. Uh, Ryan, he's Scottish, he's an author, coach, and expert in personal and professional development who's best known for helping new and ambitious coaches build their businesses as the co-founder and CEO of High Performing Coach. He was born in the small town of Bells Hill in North Lakeshire, Scotland, and is the great nephew, get this on my little football that we call soccer fans here, Sir Matt Busby, who is a Scottish football manager, or player and manager of the world-famous English football team, Manchester United. I'm an Everton fan myself, but I'll give him a, a pass here. I'm just kidding, right? He's a leading figure amongst the rise and new coaches in the industry. He's regarded by his peers as one of the best, most highly trained, experienced coaches in the world. As well as his passion for helping people living conscious and limitless lives, Ryan loves dogs. All right, man, I got my pit bull stitch here that's listening in. <laughs> Playing golf, meditating, and being on his time, again, the laptop lifestyle. His first solo book, High Performing Coach, How to Create High Fee Clients and Build a Profitable Coaching Business from the Heart is due to be published in early 2022. And I cannot wait to get my hands on that copy. And Ryan, thank you so much for coming on. Please introduce yourself to Time to Shine Today Podcast Varsity Squad. But first, what's your favorite color and why? I think it's burgundy. Burgundy. You're yeah. the first guest out of 300 <laughs> episodes, man. Why burgundy? It's obviously in your handsome double color wheel. But yeah, yeah, burgundy, yeah. Um, you know, my so Ryan means kingly in Irish. Uh, um, my star sign is Leo. So there's there's a lot of connection between me and feeling like a king. And uh, burgundy, particularly velvet burgundy, ah, is for ah, me very royal. Royal and um, regal. Yeah, very royal and regal. So I, I love that color. It, it does complement my eyes. Okay. So that also that also works as well. But for me, it's just um, yeah. If 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 you got the material, yeah, nice material, then yeah, that's I that's love color. it. You, you said <laughs> Ryan means king what? Kingly. Kingly in yeah. Irish. Yep. Awesome, dude. I never knew that. Yep. See, I learned something every day. Get to meet people yep. like you, and and this is kind of like a selfish thing for me, Squad, because I respect Ryan a, a ton and all of his links to social. You got to check out his YouTube channel, or if you're into LinkedIn, I literally was just watching him live before he popped over to here. Um, and he just puts out just fantastic content, especially for you coaches like myself out there to really look into level up your business. And Ryan, let's get to kind of the origins of yourself. We're obviously we know you're you're Scottish. You probably grew up there, or whatnot. But now you're kind of living that traveling laptop lifestyle that I mentioned before. But can we just get to the origins? Origins, if you don't mind. Yeah. So the is that the origin of how I came to be in this position? Yeah. How about just yeah. uh, start with you know. Where, where things started popping of being in the service of others. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it, so there's 2009 and I was living in London at that point um, and I had started a new relationship. And uh, I don't know if I'm sure you understand, your listeners will understand that when we go into a new relationship, depending on where we're at in our journey, usually, you know, we start getting triggered. You know, we start dealing with parts of ourselves that, that we couldn't see before. Um, and I got in this loop with my new girlfriend at that point. And we had this argument over and over and over again for four weekends in a row. Wow. And it was a kind of argument that she was wrong and I was right. You know, she was, she was, her behavior was, was a bit strange. And the way I was dealing with it was to, mm -hmm. um, to be blaming. And, um, and she kept saying the same thing over and over again, which was Ryan, it's nothing to do with me. And I'm like, no, it's you. It's definitely you. It's definitely you. Sure. And on, on the fourth weekend, you know, walking through the, the streets of Bethnal Green in East London, we were fighting about what happened the previous night. Same again, Ryan. It's got nothing to do with me. And she must have said it like 15, 20 times by this point. And I thought to myself, hmm, she keeps saying it's nothing to do with her. What if it's got something to do with me? Mm. And I had never asked myself that question before. Because until that moment, I was right about everything. My point of view was the only point of view that existed. Sure. Um, and here was I for the first time in my life asking a question that was turning the attention towards myself. And I nearly fainted because my life, 
started flashing in front of me, all the relationships that I'd had, the, the conflict I'd maybe had in my family. And then I started to see all the things I'd tried and failed at in my life and how the consistent factor in every situation was me. Mm. And in, in all the other situations, I was convinced it was them or it was the circumstances and all of that stuff. So here I was seeing that whatever I thought to be true was no longer, it didn't stack up, it wasn't true. And it, and it completely rocked me, not in a good way. And I, uh, and I said, look, I need to go home. Uh, I'll call you later. Went into my apartment, went into my bedroom, up the stairs, jumped on the bed and just sobbed like a baby. And I must have cried in total for four hours as I was realizing more and more like my life, how much, if you don't mind me saying so, bullshit, how much bullshit had been, you know, in my life, but I couldn't see it. And now I was seeing it and it was devastating, devastating. So I, I, the more I saw, the more I cried, the more I cried, the more I saw. And then two hours, you know, like halfway through this process, I started to feel lighter. And then I started to realize like, actually, this is, this is good. Right. It started to feel like, you know, what I now refer to as transformation, because for the first time in my life, I was seeing clearly. So then wow. I went to bed, I literally fell straight asleep again, like a baby, woke up the next day. And then I started contacting all my ex girlfriends. And I could see I said, Look, I'm sorry that this happened. I'm sorry that I blamed you for that. All of a sudden, everything was clear. I apologize for everything. I then contacted all my family. And I started telling them, hey, why don't we tell each other we love each other? Why don't we talk about what happened back then? Um, I wrote a list of all the things that I did that I, was, I wasn't proud of. And, sure. uh, and I knew I had to clean up my life. Uh, one of those things was the money that I'd stole from the church. Mm. I stole money from the church when I was a teenager and I, I'd never forgot about it. And it was on my list. And I eventually went to Scotland and I lifted out a whole bunch of cash and I went to see the priest. He was still there. Um, it was, you know, already old 15 years before and here right. he is still there, like still rocking it, but older. Yeah. And I went into the confessional box and I said, look, father, can I come around the other side? And he went, yeah, of course. And uh, he pulled me a chair and I said, uh, father, um, you remember a long time ago, 15 years ago, there was a little kid, orange hair, freckles, stole some money and then he disappeared. And he went, yeah, yeah, I remember, I remember that boy. And I was like, well, that was me. Mm. And um, I just want to let you know, I'm, I'm sorry. Like, I, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just young and stupid. And, but I never forgot. And, uh, you know, I wanted to come here today to tell you I'm sorry. And I have all this money. It's, it's more than I took. And I hope sure. that you can forgive me. And he looked me in the eyes and he grabbed my hand and he said, Ryan, we all make mistakes. And it's what you do about it that counts. Mm. And I, I had a cry and, you know, we had a, a moment that we shared. So my life was full of that for, for years, just completing the past, getting a bit of myself back every right. time. And in the same process, I was like, I'm not the only one going through this. I'm not the only one that would want to or need to go through this. And I started sharing, you know, what I was going through with other people. And, and that was that was a start. You know, I knew exactly what my life was about in that moment in 2009. And then here we are. Fast forward. Uh, what were you now? Like 12, 13 years. Yeah. And how old are you, Ryan, if you don't mind me asking? 42. 42. So we're not, not too far off. I'm 50. So, you know, I, 09 was my wake up call to a lot of things. I had a narcissistic uh, way about myself, not saying you were, but I was very narcissistic mm -hmm. and I was above everybody and I was always right. And then it took the market crashing and me not listening to my advisors before and kind of lost everything. So we, you guys are kind of like brothers from different mothers, man. In a sense, <laughs> 09 seems like that year. Cause that was probably yeah. the worst year up until mm -hmm. kind of now where, mm -hmm. you know, economy and in, in, in what it okay. was. So no, I appreciate you saying that. And I, I'm hearing a lot out of what you just said is uh, responsibility, right? You yeah. started taking responsibility. Let me ask you something. What is your definition of responsibility? Yeah, so um, there, was, there was actually four things that happened that day and it took me a while to name them. So if I can say them first, then I'll come back to your question. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Yes, I, I was done being a victim. Yes, started getting responsible. I was done pretending. I was done with that, started getting authentic. Um, I was done looking at myself in the mirror and not liking what I saw. So I wanted to get integrity back. And then I wanted my life to be a, a, a lot more about, you know, than just making money or being, you know, conventionally successful. I no longer needed that. I wanted to have my life be a contribution. So that was the four things that happened to me that day. Um, so you're asking what does responsibility mean to me or what's my definition of what's responsibility? What's your definition of that? 
my definition of responsibility. Um, uh, I think it was said in one of the great books that was written, it's the ability to respond. Thank you. you. Know, so Thank you. <laughs> That's exactly what I say. Exactly what I say. Yeah. And I yeah. heard it across the board with what you were saying. You yeah. took that response and made it right. That's just fantastic, yeah. Brian. Thank you for saying yeah. that. So do you work with coaches one-on-one or do you work with coaches more in group settings? Yeah. So funnily enough, I started working with one-on-one coaches five or six weeks ago for the first time in five years. Nice. So, I, you know, cause I, I, um, you know, we'd, we'd be very busy and focused sure. building HPC and it was great. And, you know, group programs and really scaling the business and making a huge impact. And um, I'd already done so much one-to-one for years before that. And then literally, you know, I was getting asked all the time and I'm like, yeah, I'm not ready. I'm not open to that. And then yeah, five, six weeks ago, sitting in meditation and it was like, okay, what's next? And it was like, yeah, time to just go back and have those one-to-one experiences. And now I, you know, I have people come and visit me in Madeira for the weekend. We go on a very deep journey. I, I work with them on, on Zoom. So I, I just thought, right, how would I love, if, if I'm going to do one-to-one, what would it look like in such a way that I would really love that and just created my own way of, of, of engaging with people. So having people come and visit me, um, if that's something that they want to do, is yeah. just a really great thing, beautiful experience. So yes. yes okay, I'm doing very good. So when you're starting to maybe work with a coach, you're maybe in the discovery period, um, to get them to help them level their business up is is there any secret sauce you can share a little bit about a, how to help them find their blind spot um help them find their blind spot because um, they wouldn't I mean, come to you i mean i have a coach as well that helps me with my coach I mean, oh yeah she helps yeah. me reveal my blind spots quite a bit yeah so. What, yeah, what I mean, kind of process I, do you use? Yeah, I mean, the whole coaching process is about mm-hmm. that. You know, that's the we we can't see ourselves, right? It's why coaching exists to help us see ourselves clearly. It's easy to see what's going on in other people. We just we just don't have that ability yet to do that for ourselves until we develop more awareness. So so the whole process of coaching is actually helping them to see themselves in a way that they can't right now. Um, there's various methods and tools, um, whether it's just questioning to help them turn their attention inwards, because again, mm. the mind, the, the mind is looking in one direction is out. The eyes are looking out. So it's very distracting for people. So it's about asking questions that help turn their attention inwards yes. to themselves. So there's, there's one way, another powerful way, um, that I help people see their blind spots. And this is probably one of my favorites, um, is reflecting. Right. So reflecting is like, let me let me just say back what I heard you say. Yes. Right. Because very often they'll say something that's like, well, they really can't see it, but it's right there. Right. So I'll either let me just play back what I heard you say and I'll actually play it back word for word and I'll go, Mm -hmm. okay, what opens up? Because then they can see me saying it and it's obvious, but it wasn't obvious when they're saying it. And they're like, oh, I, I sound like a victim. Exactly. All right. So, yes. but there's, there's another way I like to reflect, which is even more fun. And then um, I'll give you an example. So sure. I had a client uh, a few weeks ago and she was telling me that she had, you know, had a great call with somebody offered her high fee. Then the client said they wanted to work with her, but because of what was going on in Ukraine, they had actually invited a family over to stay with them. And so she needed time to think about it. And my client just didn't know where to go. You know, had no idea where to go. So right away she goes, I completely understand. Thanks so much. You know, maybe I'll send you an email in a few weeks. She went, okay, great. Okay, thanks. So she comes to me and she's like, I just didn't know what to do. You know, where can you go when somebody says that? So I'm listening. I go, look, can I just reflect something back to you? She goes, yes. And I said, you're really reasonable, aren't you? And she went, yeah, I'm reasonable everywhere. And I went, yeah. And that's what you need to get, you know, for you to just accept that in that way without any questioning, opening, you know, anything like that is because it's your, it's over here with you. You're, you're just too reasonable. So you got to look at where in your life you're being reasonable with your partner, your business, your kids, your clients, and go and start cleaning that up, go and start getting authentic about that and actually saying what you want to say. And she had a, a major breakthrough right there and then. Love that. Love that maybe if you're still in the discovery period, Ryan, is with them and making sure you're the right horse for their course to help them guide them through their coaching journey. Is there any good question that you wish they would ask you but never do? 
That's a great question. And when you ask that, do you mean in service of them or which I'm sure you well, do? Well, I mean, if you were, if or... I was hiring you, I would be, be kind of like, what do you see in me that makes me a great candidate to level up my coaching? Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's, yeah. that's what yeah. I, I would ask, but I'm also experienced like yeah. other coaches, you know, is there anything else that you wish maybe they would ask you? Cause you're doing a lot of the questions, you know? Oh yeah. You know, that oh, yeah. you ever wish that. Uh, they would yeah, ask yeah, you yeah, yeah. Um, do I ever, let me just check that. No problem. Ever, is there is there a question that I'd like them to ask me? Um, I think I think there's um I, I had this once where I um, was coaching my C my my co-founder in HPC mm -hmm. and he, he he asked me to give me to he asked me to give him everything I had. And oh, wow. and and um, because I told him that when I was working with my coaches, I said to them give me everything and yeah. it, cha it changed everything. And that was why I, will, will you that give is, me everything you've will got? Will you me? give me everything? Dude, that is everything. amazing. Yeah. yeah. So, so he came to me one day and, uh, and he went, look, I see, I see that these limitations are popping up. And he's like, will, will you give me everything you got and stop holding back? Cause you said you were holding back cause I wasn't ready. And I didn't ask. And I went, are you sure? <laughs> wow. Like, yeah. So I would, I would love awesome. a client to come up and, and I mean, I give them everything anyway, but right. know, if we can start on that and we're both up for like everything, yeah. then yeah, I'd be like, Every, yeah. everybody needs to hold their coach, res or, you know, right. responsible. That, that, that's awesome, dude. So yep. have you seen the movie back to the future? Yes. Okay. Let's get that DeLorean with Marty McFly. Let's go back to the double deuce, the 22 year old Ryan. Mm -hmm. What kind of knowledge nuggets might you drop on him? That's so much to change anything because your journey is pretty kick ass. All right. Yeah. But, yeah. Like what kind of knowledge nuggets would you drop on him to maybe shorten his learning curve a little bit, maybe level mm. up just a little bit faster mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in life? Uh, yeah. I mean, trust in the process. You're exactly where you need to be. Be patient. There is no rush. Wow. That, that's strong. And also when you're stuck, get your asking gear, right? Ask for it. Love yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was I was always good at that, by the way. I was always the first of my hand up, so he wouldn't have needed <laughs> that. Um, and then um, yeah, like always, you know, you believe that it can be done yeah. and you can do it. It can yes. be done and you can do it. Right, right. If you can believe it, you can conceive it, right? Oh, Napoleon Hill exactly. would say that. I exactly. love that. So, right, how do you want your dash remembered? That little line in between your incarnation date and your expiration date, your life date, your death date, and your tombstone. Hopefully it's a long way down the road. But how do you want Ryan's dash remembered? Hmm. Ryan really enjoyed his life. <laughs> you, you, you are. You're not just like a poser, <laughs> you know, imposter. Yeah. You're out there yeah. enjoying it. So that, yeah. that, that leads me to the next question. I've heard you say uh, uh, countless times, but I want to get your insight here on Time to Shine today on this. But the future of humanity is consciousness. You've said mm -hmm. that quite a few times. Can you Unpack that a little bit for the listeners and, and what you mm -hmm. mean by that. Again, squad, that's the future of humanity is consciousness. Yeah. Um, I mean, the past has largely been unconsciousness, you know, and in the present has, you know, there's some sense of balance starting to, to be experienced, but we're very much uh, an unconscious uh, race currently. There's people like us, the people like your listeners, that we are evolving pushing the boundaries you know getting out of our minds into our heart touching our souls waking up to to who we really are which is not just our thinking mind and this seemed revolutionary not that long ago like you mm -hmm. know when people like Eckhart Tolle wrote his book so um so the future is yeah it's this sense of presence this um understanding of ourselves um as consciousness and a lot more you know once we get to that point um but for me it's like um there, there was a great meditation I heard lately. Uh, it was called Vapor, right? Brilliant meditation. And it's basically how everything's vapor, which means life is pretty meaningless. It's not a big deal. Just 
you know, get on with it and, and make right, the most right. of it. Right. And he says, um, you know, if you took the whole human, his- if you took the history of the world and you imagine that your wingspan uh, represented the history of the world and you take a nail file and you clip the edge of your nail, you would have just wiped out the entire human history. Wow. Right. So to put that in con, he's trying to put in context, like we- we've just started, you know, and my, my interpretation of that is, yeah, as a human race, we are literally just babies. And we, you know, we're wondering, you know, and putting all this pressure on ourselves to get it right. We're, we're, we're too young to get it any better than we're right. getting it. It looks I, I, like we've been here for years, but yeah. we've only been here for a tiny clip of it in the yeah. grand scheme of things, right? Yeah. So, you know, babies, you know, they got a lot to learn. They got to wake up. They got to grow up. They got to learn how to be independent. They got to get out of their heads. Then teenagers go through their teenager phase. So wherever we're at on this yeah. line, babies, teenagers, but we're still young. Um, but as we grow and as we mature, we're going to wake up like you've woke up, like I've woke up, like the squad has woken up. This is the future. It's inevitable. And um, whether it takes 100 years or 500 years, it doesn't matter. As long right. as we don't get hit by a meteor first sure. or somebody does something really stupid, which is how life could go anyway for any of us. But sure. for me, for me, we're, you know, we're still young. We've got a lot to learn, but it's only headed in one direction. I love I love that you say that. I hear a lot of like staying present and stuff, and in in growing through any kind of turmoil or any obstacles. I mean, because Ryan, I mean, you probably will agree with me. Like a lot of people have a foot in the past, a foot in the future, and they piss all over the present, right? So it's like yep. just yep. doing that. I love 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 that you said that. So Ryan, what is your definition of a life well lived? Yeah, I mean, it's it's as it says in my tombstone. It's really simple. And this is what took me 42 years probably to really, really get, you know, after I'd worked yeah. through whatever I had to work through, is just enjoy it. Yes. Enjoy it. Make the most of it. And that isn't easy for so many of us because of what happened, because of what he did, and because of what happened there in this situation. Um, but every situation can be used for our evolution or our growth. If yeah. you're willing to do that, you know, that's what alchemy is. It's the water into wine. It's the metal into gold. It's the, it's the, I got made redundant into, I built my own six figure empire, whatever it might be. It's like what you went through in 2009. That's the beauty of life. No matter what is coming our way, we can use it to our advantage and then learn how to make the most of it and enjoy it. Uh, so that that's is, what it's about for me. Nothing else really needs to be said after that with that, with regards to that. That's, that's beautiful. And squad, we're going to take my good friend Ryan here through our leveling up lightning round just as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors and affiliates. Time to shine today. Podcast varsity squad. We're back with the coach's coach, my good friend, Ryan Matthew. And Ryan, one of these days, I'm going to have to make that little road trip over and hang out with you for a minute. And, you know, we can bounce some stuff off each other. And I know I'll come back learning a ton. We could probably talk about an hour on each one of these questions I'm going to ask you, but you have Oh, yeah. Our lightning round, you have five seconds with no explanation. So you ready to level up? I'm ready. Let's do this. What is the best leveling up advice Ryan's ever received? Never give up. Love it. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Contemplation, otherwise known as meditation. I love this. So if you see me kind of walking down the street or whatnot, and Fergie looks like he's in his doldrums a little bit, like what book might you hand Read the power of now. There you go. Love that. Love it. When you text, what's your most commonly used emoji? It's the one where it's smiling and the eyes are closed with two triangles. Like, love it. <laughs> I love it. It's quite a bit watching. He nailed it. I love it. <laughs> so, Ryan, nicknames growing up? Ryo. Ryo? Okay. Very cool. <laughs> not, not, nothing too fancy, but yeah, Ryo. Love it. Oh, actually, that's not like Matthew. They, everybody called me. Mathy, but it was Mathy with an F rather than TH. That was the slang way. Okay. So there we go. Yeah. Say that again. Mathy. Mathy. Love it. Love yeah, it. Love yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. So chess checkers or Monopoly? Chess. Love it. Go to my go to ice cream flavor. Anything with caramel in it. I do. We're hanging out, dude, for real. <laughs> there's a there's a sandwich called the Mathy. What's on that sandwich? It's like the best organic plant-based shizzle dizzle, but with a really amazing homemade spicy sauce. Beautiful. So you have access to a time machine for one day. You can't change anything. All you can do is observe. Would you go 20 years forward or 20 years back? Forward. Forward. Love it. Love it. Love it. 
Is there any favorite charity and organization you like to give your time or money to? Uh, yes, uh, we work with B1G1. So we have a dog here as well. Love it. <laughs> um, we work with B1G1, buy one, give one. Uh, when we sell something, uh-huh. we give something. And we have mm. a project in India where we, where, we, where we support uh, uh, children in, uh, in India. So they have e- access to e-learning. We've, we've donated Beautiful. nearly half a million days to that, to that cause. Love it, man. Love it. And Donnie, reach out to him and get that, um, that link for that. Okay. Awesome. Thanks. Last question. You can elaborate on this one, but what's the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? It's got to be 80s with that. Any <laughs> Dude, about. we're definitely going to jam. I mean, the 80s had it all, right? I mean, oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. the decade of decadence, right? Big hair, yeah. don't care. The, you yeah. kind of rap with Run DMC and Beastie yeah. Boys. Yeah. And then you had yeah. glam rock, metal rock. You know, everything yeah. was in there. Yeah. You know? so, and, and it had Wham. Wham. Dude, George Michael <laughs> and I, whatever the other guy's name is. You know, exactly. but, no, Wham was, exactly. was huge here. That, that, that's yeah. awesome. So, Brian, how can we find you, my friend? Uh, highperforming.coach so www.highperforming.coach all over youtube linkedin and now you know taking on instagram uh, as we've been asked to do more and more and then good old-fashioned google you'll see lots of articles and interviews that, that that's happened there yeah and it's chock full of just awesome squad you, you've got to visit it it'll be in the show notes below and Ryan, if you give me one last solid and leave me with last one last knowledge nugget we can take with us, internalize, and take action on. Forgive your parents. Heal your heart, no matter the cost. And open yourself up to the possibility of falling in love and living <laughs> happily ever after. Wow. It was that first one. Forgive, your, forgive parents. your parents for okay. your forgive your parents, your forgive mom, your, your dad, forgive mm-hmm. your brothers, your sisters, your sons, your daughters, forgive all got of it. them. Heal Love that it. while you got the chance. Love it. And, and squad, we just had a really emotional, heart touch, felt, and masterclass with my good friend Ryan, which means kingly in Irish. You know, he was triggered seeing things he couldn't see before he's kind of caught in a loop you know that he re- recognized through help of of somebody and himself in his pillow that he's crying on that he noticed a consistent factor was him so he took responsibility again it's the ability to respond that's what ryan did he got done being a victim done pretending done not liking himself he wanted more than just monetary gain he wanted to contribute and help others level up you know, and he reminds us that coaching exists to help see themselves clearly with more, more see yourself clearly with more awareness, you know, through reflection and get them to see inwards. That's what a good coach will do. And that's what Ryan does. You know, he wants you to remember to trust the process and the protocol of whatever you're going through. You are exactly where you need to be. So be patient. And if you feel stuck, like my good friend, Leah Woodford would say, get your asking gear, ask for questions. You know, he's somebody that I believe is planting trees he's never going to sit in the shade of, you know, because he's giving, 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 and moving forward and realizing that every single situation that he goes through in life and that we're going through in life, there's an experience of growth there if you're really looking for it, if you're present and looking for it. And he, lastly, he reminds us to forgive the peeps in our life, including that dude in the mirror or do that if you're female listening in the mirror, forgive that person, heal your heart and open yourself to the possibility of, not only falling in love with others, but falling in love with everything. And Ryan, you level up your health, you level up your wealth, you're humble, yet you're hungry, you're a world traveler. I'm I'm living by, although I live in paradise, I'm living vicariously through you (laughs) on your travels. And I I can't wait to do some collaboration of some sort in the future, man. I love your guts so much, brother. Sounds sounds great. And now I know why your show is so damn popular. (laughs) Thanks, man. I'll chat with you soon, Ryan. Love it. Thank you.